Hello everybody, I hope you're all well. In this video, I wanna talk about palm oil. I've been talking about doing this video for quite a while and it is long overdue. This is a really difficult topic to understand and talk about. I'm a little bit nervous about sharing this, but I hope that you all just bring an open mind to this and are willing to kind of hear me out and hear all the angles on this topic. The point of me making this video is so that I can share what I've learned about palm oil and the issues around it in, in relation to soap making so that I can share that with you so that you can make an informed decision about whether or not you choose to use it in your soap making. There are lots of reasons why people might want to avoid it for soap making and I can completely understand that. I bought four kilograms of palm oil from a supplier here in Queensland years ago and it took me years and years and years to go through it and you've probably seen me use it in some of my old recipes. Since then I've been doing some more self-education on the topic of palm oil and reading, spending some time researching and reading and really trying to get my head around uh, what the issues are with it and I really want to share that with you today. So that'll be the first part of this video and the second part of the video I'm just going to have a little practical demo of how I handle my palm oil if I do buy it for soap making. You do need to prepare it for, your, for use in your soap recipes. It does need to be sort of stored and prepared in a particular way. So I'll show that in the second part of the video. Before I get started though, I just wanna say a really big thank you and a shout out to New Directions Australia in Sydney who supplied this um, really lovely certified organic palm oil to me to use in this video. I wasn't sure if I was ever going to use palm oil again, but um, I had some contact with New Directions and they really wanted to support my, my channel because they had seen that I had been using some of their products. And I thought that would be wonderful if they could help me out with some ingredients, which they have done. And I'm really, really grateful for their support. I will put a link to New Directions Australia in the video description and you can head to their website and have a look at the amazing range of products that they have that are really useful for soap makers. So what is palm oil? Palm oil is a vegetable oil that is derived from the fruit of a perennial evergreen palm tree called the oil palm. The botanical name for it is Elaeus guineensis uh, and it's native to West and Southwest Africa. The biggest producers of palm oil in the world are Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand and Nigeria. There are two types of palm oil that come from the oil palm tree. One is the, the oil that comes from the red fleshy part of the fruit which surrounds the inner kernel and that is the most commonly used product that we refer to when we talk about palm oil for soap making. As you can see here this one is a white creamy color. It has been refined to remove the natural red color of the fruit. The fruit is red. The other type of oil that comes from the oil palm tree is palm kernel oil and that is pressed out of the the central kernel of the fruit. So palm oil comes from the fruit surrounding the kernel. Palm kernel oil comes from the kernel itself. Palm kernel oil has a different fatty acid profile to palm fruit oil, which is the regular palm oil. Both palm oil and palm kernel oil are semi-solid at room temperature, but palm kernel oil is much, much higher in saturated fats. It's about 81% saturated fat and palm oil is about 49% saturated fat. Palm kernel oil is actually quite similar to coconut oil in its fatty acid profile. So it is often used in place of coconut oil in some countries where it's widely accessible instead of coconut oil to give that really nice big lather in the soap. And what's palm oil most used for around the world? Well, this really surprised me. I didn't know all of this. The main uses for palm oil around the world are in food and cooking and food production, cosmetics, soap, shampoos, things like that, and biofuel. It's a very stable, versatile and commonly used oil for cooking and processed food production around the world. Um, in many Western countries, it is ubiquitous in the food products, particularly baked goods. 
uh, like biscuits and crackers and cakes and things like that that we find on our supermarket shelves because it's so stable it really took the place of a lot of animal fats in baking and it also has replaced the hydrogenated vegetable oils that used to be used in margarines and and vegetable fats that used to be used in baking so palm oil is not a hydrogenated fat loaded in trans fats it's quite a high saturated fat but it hasn't been hydrogenated it's naturally solid like this so it's very very versatile and very well loved for all of its applications in home and commercial cooking but also in factory food production palm oil is everywhere if you go down the supermarket shelf and you look at your tim tams or your hobnobs or whatever i don't know whatever biscuits you might like or cookies you know in the supermarket shelf you have a look they don't always show tell you that it's palm oil but if it's got vegetable oil written on the label it's more than likely palm oil there's also a really high demand for palm oil to be used in the manufacturing of biofuel as an as an alternative to petroleum based fuel products so what are the issues with palm oil then why is it such a problem why do we need to be concerned about this and understand some of the nuances about this issue first of all it's important to note that due to increasing global population there is a general increased demand for oils for vegetable oils globally and palm oil and other vegetable oils play a big part in the diet of a very large proportion of the world's population whether we like it or not it's just a fact a lot of people cook with oil it's a way to get lots of calories and energy into the diet and you know many countries don't have the luxury of choosing between many different types of fats they use what's available and palm oil is a really big part of that picture uh, from the perspective of use of cooking oils globally oil palms are also a really efficient oil crop compared to other vegetable oils they are perennial evergreen palm trees and they produce a much higher yield of oil per hectare compared to other vegetable oils like uh, canola sunflower or soybean oil seed crops palm oil production has also been a really significant contributor to jobs and economic growth in the countries that produce it but it's also a major cause of deforestation and habitat loss in tropical asia and central and south america so that's the real issue with palm oil is that it's something that a lot of the world really depends on it's ubiquitous it's used everywhere by food cosmetics industries it's used for so many things but it's not always produced sustainably and habitat loss deforestation is is the main issue for it so it's really complicated and from the research that i did it looks like palm oil is here to stay you know it's a really big part of the world's food economy um, and it doesn't look like it's really going to be a possibility to ban it and there are reasons why that's problematic even though we can understand why people might want to ban it and not use it at all um, banning palm oil could actually diminish the current efforts to produce it sustainably and could actually even increase land clearing for other oil crops shifting biodiversity loss issues just to other regions you know due to the high yield of palm oil per hectare compared to other crops you know if we stop using palm oil the need for vegetable oil is still going to be very great the demand for it will still be, be very great so it will just shift the need for land clearing into other crop industries so we'll be clearing land for soybeans instead of palm trees which aren't going to produce as much oil per hectare of land cleared so you can see what I mean it's a bit of a problem so it is a very important crop that helps to meet the ever-growing global demand for vegetable oils but we need to ensure that we're properly educated about it and that we use it and consume it judiciously and also support more transparency and sustainable production where we can and why is palm oil so widely used in soap making what makes it so good for soap well just look in the labels in the shops pick up any bar of soap in you know commercially made bar of soap in a supermarket and it will probably say right at the top 
sodium palmitate. And what is sodium palmitate? It just means saponified palm oil. So most of the soaps and also a lot of the shampoos and liquid cosmetic you know, cleansing sort of products that we use, personal care products, they have palm oil in them. So just like it's in so many of the packaged processed food products in the food sections of our supermarket shelves, it's in just about everything in the, in the soap and cosmetic and shampoo aisle as well. It is absolutely everywhere and in everything. The reason why it's so useful in soap recipes is that palm oil from the palm fruit has about the same fatty acid profile as many animal fats and it really does make a wonderful hard bar of soap with a stable creamy lather and a reasonably gentle cleansing properties. So you get everything basically that most people want in a bar of soap, something that's hard and long lasting, has a good lather, not too drying. It ticks all those boxes. So we can understand why, why people want to use it. And that's why I'm having this conversation because it's a very attractive oil to want to use, but it comes with issues. Palm oil is also really highly stable in terms of shelf storage. And so it has much more reduced issues with rancidity and spoilage compared to other oils that you might be using in your recipes. So what should we do then? What should soap makers be asking themselves about whether or not they want to use um, palm oil? And what can we do? What can we do about it? My take on this is that I think we should be questioning where all of our ingredients come from and not just in our soap making but in our lives generally. Um, there are lots and lots of uh, environmental issues associated with things that we buy to eat, to use in our household, the clothes that we put on our body. There's all sorts of um, things that we may or may not be aware of that can be really problematic in the consumer culture that we have. And some of the questions that I ask myself is, you know, where did it come from? Like how local is it? How far has it traveled to get to me? Is it organic or was it grown in a way that damages the land that it was grown on? Like, is it a crop associated with heavy pesticide or herbicide usage? Is it a crop that requires a lot of fertilizer inputs, which also puts a drain on other resources? All of those sorts of questions. Um, also, I think it's really important to consider the true cost of the products we buy. You know, are we just buying things because they're cheap and affordable for us, which is important and don't get me wrong, I totally get that. Um, but sometimes the savings that we get in, in the products that we buy, we might be able to buy them really, really cheap, but is somebody else somewhere paying the cost for us to have it so cheaply? And what I mean by that is, where is it coming from? Who's producing it? Are they getting paid fairly for the, for the work that they're doing to produce or grow the, the product that we're consuming very, very cheaply? So these are all the kinds of questions I would be asking about it. And in terms of palm oil specifically, there are a couple of things to know about it if you choose to buy it. For me personally, I, like I said before, I'm still a little bit on the fence about it, but I have received this five kilo bucket of palm oil from New Directions and uh, this was a gift to me as a, as a way to support my videos um, and I'll be using it in my soap recipes but this will last me a very, very long time. I will probably not buy any more after this, maybe, I don't know, maybe I will, maybe I won't but I actually think about my receiving this palm oil or you know if I bought it I would think about buying it in relation to the bigger picture of my consumption patterns and my behavior in the rest of my life and I was talking with my husband about this just before we make all of our own bread we if we if we want to have a cake you know 90% of the time we'll make it ourselves we don't buy biscuits we don't buy Tim Tams <laughs> We don't buy packaged processed food from the supermarket very often. Sometimes we do very, very minimally. It's something that we try and avoid because of all the packaging and it's full of palm oil and, you know, like they're usually full of sugar and other stuff that we don't want to eat too much of. So we, we try and avoid it generally. Um, and we're very 
are kind of minimal consumers generally in our life. We're really careful with our energy use, with our water use. I wear my clothes until they're completely worn out, which is why when you see in my videos, I just like I'm wearing the same t-shirt that I've been wearing for five years. It's because it is the same t-shirt and I don't care about fashion or anything like that because it's not environmentally sustainable to be buying new clothes constantly. Um, admittedly, if you've got little kids and you know children in your life, that's a different story. You, you, you know, they outgrow them, you've got to keep buying new things. But if you're an adult and if you can afford to buy um, reasonable quality clothes or even just look after the clothes if they're cheaper clothes, look after them as best as you can, care for them so that you get as much time out of them. Everything that we do in our life adds up. And I just decide to, yeah, I might use palm oil in some of my handmade soap recipes, but I'm not buying it in any other way, or if I am, it's in a very minimal way. And I'm trying to be the most conscious consumer that I can be. And I think that's important. And that's what I would encourage you to do is to think about palm oil, but try and think about everything else you do. I know people who refuse to buy any handmade soap with palm oil in it and refuse to make any soap with palm oil in it and I totally respect that choice but if that person then goes to the shops and buys packets of packaged biscuits and cakes you know for a lunch party or something you know it's kind of like well we care about it in this context but we don't care about it in that context. I think we need to really start looking at our overall behavior and um, try and make well-educated decisions about these things and, and try to do the best that we can knowing that we can't do everything perfectly because we're not perfect and it's not a perfect world. <laughs> the other thing you can do is uh, if you've got a good source of local um, animal fat that is something that would otherwise go to waste, you can could consider rendering that and using that instead of palm oil in your soap recipes if you really want the qualities of that. Beef tallow and lard and other types of tallow have very, very similar fatty acid profiles to palm oil. In soap recipes, they're about the only other type of fat that you can substitute for palm oil. So consider that, although there are issues with that as well, depending on the sourcing of the fat from animals and how they were cared for and all of those issues. The other thing you can do if you want to avoid palm completely is you can use more butters. You could use a little bit of beeswax. You can use other combinations of fats and oils in your recipe to improve the qualities of your recipe without using palm oil. And I've got a video called Choosing Oils for Soap Making that uh, goes through all of the details of how to pick your oils for your soap recipe based on the qualities that you want and how to evaluate your soap recipes in a soap calculator to make sure that you're getting what you want. The final thing to know about palm oil is that it is possible to buy and support sustainably produced palm oil. Um, New Directions sell two types of palm oil. They sell a conventional non-organic um, non-certified sustainable palm oil and they sell this organic certified organic palm oil as well which is RSPO certified mass balanced palm oil. What does that mean? RSPO stands for the Round Table on Sustainable Palm Oil and my understanding is that was set up like as an industry certification body to to provide some certification standards for producers to try and meet raise the awareness and raise the standard of palm oil production and to try and ensure sustainable land use for palm oil uh, plantations i'm going to put some links in the description box below this video where you can read more about that my understanding is that in Australia, there are a couple of types of RSPO certified palm oil that you can buy. There is one company that sells purely um, segregated certified sustainable palm oil, RSPO certified sustainable palm oil. And most of the other companies that sell, including New Directions, that sell um, RSPO certified palm oil is the mass balance type. 
And mass balance just means that within those lots of palm oil that, that gain the RSPO mass balance certification, there is actually a blend of certified sustainable and non-certified sustainable palm oil. And that's because there are a whole lot of hoops and expenses that producers need to go through to get the certification that if we just bought all of the purely certified sustainable palm oil, there would be a lot of growers that would be completely left out of that supply chain. And even though they might be growing and using their land sustainably, doing everything the right way, they might not be able to actually supply their palm oil to the market because they haven't been able to afford or go through the process of certification. So it's really complicated, but there is change and there is raising awareness about it. And I think that's probably one of the major reasons why I wanted to do this video was to rather than think, oh no, we can't use palm oil, it's evil. <laughs> um, you know, we shouldn't be using it at all is to, to look at what are the issues around it and how can we make better decisions. And for me, it was really important to learn how important it is as a food product in the global food supply network. It is here to stay. It's not going to go anywhere unless we stop buying shampoo and we stop, you know, completely, which we can do as individuals, but the, the wider population, I don't think are going to stop buying soap not everybody can make their own you know these things are still going to be available and if we still want to buy our biscuits or cookies off the supermarket shelf then palm oil's still going to be used in them then we may as well support the palm oil industry to do things more sustainably so i've just realized that it took me a lot longer to explain all of this than i thought it would <laughs> so i think i will stop this video here now and I will record the practical part two, how to actually handle your palm oil. I'm gonna do that as a separate part two video. So I hope that was helpful and helped you to get your head around some of the complexities of using palm oil in your soap making. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or anything that I missed out, um, any other important bits of information that you'd like to share with me or that you'd like to know about that I could cover in another video someday. And just finally, before I go, if you're interested in learning more about soap making or you're just getting into soap making and you're wanting more support, then please consider joining my membership community. I've got a beautiful group of people. They're sourdough bakers and soap makers, but a lovely membership group happening. It's all through Buy Me A Coffee. So www.buymeacoffee.com slash Ellie's Every Day. And then you can just look at the membership option there. Um, it's pretty affordable. It's in Australian dollars. So it's like about half the price for Americans. Um, but I've got a Facebook group and everybody's in there and we're all sharing and learning and supporting each other and having regular group catch ups. It's really, really fun. And they are just the most lovely group. It's the most supportive Facebook group I've ever had anything to do with. Um, and I've been in a few. So it's really great. I would really, really love for you to come and hang out with me there. That's the place to come if you've got more questions and you really want to get some in-depth, you know, good support with what you're doing. Anyway, thank you so much for hanging around to the end. I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you again soon for the part two. Bye.